for a while now, I've been having this idea in my head of being able to use all my devices together seamlessly by being able to access all of my files from anywhere. In my head, this would look like being able to be on my iPhone, taking a whole bunch of videos, and then when I'm ready to get home, uploading them to where I can access them from my PC, TV, or any wireless device at home. That way I could delete the videos on my phone and not take up as much space. Or say I'm working on a video project from my PC, and then I wanna be able to access those videos from my iPad outside of the house. So I've tried several different methods to make this work, like using my iPhone and Mac together for AirDrop or flat out using cloud storage like Google Drive and iCloud. These methods felt a little too clunky for me. And I'm sure there are better methods out there and more efficient ways of doing it. In retrospect, I think I just needed a server. So in this video, I'll take you through what it was like building one show you how I personally use it and hopefully give you some sort of value and show why it may be beneficial for you to create one too. It all started for me being on YouTube one day and I stumbled upon this guy's video about his home lab and surf. So I got on chat GPT and start looking at what it would take to build one. And originally, I was just going to try to use a Raspberry Pi device until I realized I had this old PC build sitting in my closet. You pretty much can use any computer that you have as long as you can put hard drives in it, install the operating system, and can leave it powered on. I had this PC case with the motherboard, a power supply, and a Ryzen 2200G processor from years ago. I honestly didn't know if it was going to work or not, but it did. I just needed some RAM, a fan, and a ton of storage. Any of the hard drives that I had in past laptops, I would always save them. And I didn't know what I was going to use it for because the old hard drives are slow compared to SSD. But in this case, it actually works out better. For RAM, I temporarily used eight gigabytes from my desktop computer. I had this fan that was probably overkill. It was way too much probably for the server, but it's the only fan I had and it just made sense not to spend that much more money. So I put it all together and it didn't take me long to see that it would actually boot up and work. For the most part, like TrueNAS, it's different and there's a lot of options on what you can do there. At first it felt a little daunting, but after a while I digested and learned. The big question for me was how well were the transfer speeds gonna be? And for me, it didn't disappoint. So AirDrop takes about 40 to 60 megabytes per second, while using a NAS server can be as quick as 250 to 280 megabytes per second, which cuts a significant amount of time when you're thinking about uh, 10 gigs or three gigabyte files. The NAS server connected to my network, I'm able to transfer speeds really quickly on a Windows computer or any operating system for that matter. So it really comes in handy when I'm switching between devices. Of course, using a true NAS scale for a file server is only the tip of the iceberg. It's a much more robust system that I actually plan on diving into more and exploring using some of the dedicated apps when I get the chance. Right now, what I've primarily been using the server for is storage and accessing videos from different locations. And the way that I'm able to do that is through an app called Tailscale. Tailscale basically acts as your own personal VPN, which allows you to tunnel from a different network and give you the experience like you're on the same network as you are from home. So I can access server application or files from anywhere, as long as I have a Wi-Fi connection. So I could be in a coffee shop, another house, or just using my own phone's personal hotspot. And the best part about this app is that it was free. Of course, the main reason someone even creates a file server is usually for redundancy and making sure that all your files are backed up just in case something happens or OneDrive fails. 
And I'll be honest, I haven't set this up yet. And I probably need to soon since all of my data is on here. I also don't have as much storage compared to what you would normally see in a server. And that's because I'm starting off slow. Just wanted to get it built in this. And I do plan on doing additional upgrades in the future. Because this server is a desktop build, I'm able to actually add more hardware through the PCI expansion slots that I have. For now, this is what the current state of the server is. A place where I can access all of my files fast and on the go. So I'd like to know if there's anybody else out there with the same experience building their own server. Did you use TrueNAS? And what applications are you using on your server if you did build one? Also, what upgrades do you have in mind for your server? And if so, what advice could you lend to me? Either way it goes, I hope this video has been some sort of value to you and has been helpful. If I can help in any sort of way, if you have questions, feel free to comment down below. And I look forward to talking. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to. I'm Justin, and I hope that you have a blessed day. Bye.